Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Jonathan Andressen, who is the Senior Director of Marketing at BitGlass. This is actually Jonathan's second IT Jam with us. So for those who haven't seen our first video with Jonathan, BitGlass is a cybersecurity company that delivers data and threat protection and operates at cloud scale across a global network of over 200 points of presence. So welcome back to the jam, Jonathan. Hello, good to see you again. Yeah, you too. So we're going to be talking a lot about Secure Access Service Edge or SASE today. Um, so can you give me a brief overview of what it is and how does it factor into BitGlass's offerings? Sure. So Secure Access Service Edge, uh, which is SASE, uh, was a term coined by Gartner in 2019. Uh, and it really it refers to the combination of several parts of a traditional security. The first is it takes traditional network security and traditional cloud security and combines them into a single unified solution set. So SASE is really a technology that's, I mean, it's really exciting because it's truly made for digital transformation. It's a solution that's made for digital and it integrates these pieces together and delivers both cloud and network security as a single solution over the cloud. And so if you think about all the traditional security and network security elements enterprises have built up over the last 15 years or so around the data center, protecting data that's in the data center. You've got your, your remote access security, your firewall, your VPNs for remote, remote uh, workers. You've got secure web gateways, all of that, even maybe a network antivirus, all of that protect your data center. Now your data is no longer in the data center. It's more and more in the cloud. So it replaces that uh, with a cloud delivered solution for network security. And it also takes cloud security, which has evolved in, in a way um, to be sort of disparate portions of your, your DLP, your CASB, uh, and, and integrates that with uh, SASE as well. So it's a truly unified um, solution. And what it does is it looks at um, your data from three key areas. It prioritizes the identity of the user, which is so paramount for cloud security. It looks at the context of the user, the device, the application that's trying to access the data. And then it also looks at the posture of, of the organization and implements those three areas. And you know, when we think of SASE, we think of three key pillars from a, from, a, from a big glass perspective, but also from a recommended perspective for companies and organizations, there are three key pillars. The first is, you'd have a cloud access security broker at CASB, uh, which provides real time and out of band protection for cloud services. And that also combines a secure web gateway technology. And for BitGlass, you know, we have a technology called Smart Edge, which is a secure web gateway that actually works on the device, which is very innovative. Uh, and it combines that, those two elements, secure web gateway and CASB with zero trust network access. And access control is so critical in a cloud world. Uh, so we really need that to make sure we have the right, the right identity and we control access to the data. Those are the three key pillars in SASE. And uh, those are, that's really where security is going. If you ask, well, where's the future of security? It's really SASE. Gartner says that by 2024, almost 50% of organizations will have deployed a SASE solution. And that was before the pandemic hit. So now that you know, we're going through a lot more remote working and a lot more uh, faster shift to digital. You can expect those those rates and those percentages to be to be higher now. Right. Yeah. And um, could you tell me what do you think the advantages of SASE solutions are over traditional cybersecurity tech? These yeah. Well, it's interesting because with SASE, it's it's like a lot of new technologies. Um, you have to have several different pieces to come together for new technology to become. Uh, interesting and adopted by the mainstream. The first is with, with Secure Access Service Edge, SASE, is, is, is the cost savings. So when you take all these disparate products and combine them into a single platform, you can really deliver orders of magnitude cost savings. So if you take, for example, just the uh, hardware costs uh, and the maintenance costs of your traditional network security functions, uh, your VPNs, your secure web gateway, your on-premise DLP, even some of your other dis subscriptions, okay, maybe you have a CASB solution, maybe your identity solution, maybe your multi-factor authentication uh, solution, and you collapse all of that into a single solution set, 
uh, it can deliver you know, significant cost savings greater than 50% of operations, operational cost savings and CapEx savings and a four month or less timed ROI. So the cost savings are, are huge just from a, a management standpoint and a cost outlay standpoint. And there's also the costs that, that shift with a SaaS solution where you're not backhauling all your traffic to a central data center for Secure Web Gateway, for example, you're decrypting it on the device, you're doing it locally, you're saving on, on the cost of backhauling that traffic, which is ideal for, for a cloud digital world. Um, and the other advantages you have besides cost savings, which are, are big, um, is the security uh, improvements. So if you think about it, uh, when you've got multiple security products protecting your data center, you've, it's, it's quite complicated. You've got to have a layered defense and a depth and defense architecture that bridges the gap between all these disparate products from different vendors. When you move to a SASE platform, you can really have consistent security implemented across all your devices, all your users, uh, a common baseline that sets up policy uh, and protection for all the users, no matter where they are. And I think that consistent security is really uh, important for organizations today because a lot of people are accessing data in more places on more devices from more applications than ever before and it's hard to keep track of those and that also gives IT a single point of control so a single point of control that IT teams can use to secure all their SaaS applications or IaaS applications all sorts of cloud service services they, they deploy control access to uh, web destinations and control the web traffic, do URL filtering, doing cat by category, for example, combining threat protection, identifying what's shadow IT and defending the data that's inside on-premise applications. All of that is integrated into a single platform. So simplicity um, and better security with a single point of control is also a major advantage. So I believe we're gonna see a lot more discussion of SASE going into 2021 as more and more organizations start realizing the benefits and the industry is already realizing that and starts marketing it more to, to organizations around the world. Mm -hmm. And so for those organizations who are perhaps looking into SASE solutions, what advice would you give them for uh, what to look for in a SASE solution? Yeah, this is important because I think, you know, as a vendor community, there's often dis different messages sent to, to uh, the market and to, to, to clients. And really the thing to think about is your particular data protection and data security needs at your organization. But there's several things to think about. The first is it doesn't happen overnight that we don't move to SASE or we move to a, a cloud first world. There is a evolution path as we move from, you know, legacy security um, solutions, but also uh, legacy applications that move. There's a migration path there. But when we do that migration to the cloud, we really want to make sure that we have the same level or better security than we've had before and we have um, better performance. And we need to make sure we have um, performance that uh, security doesn't become a bottleneck and block the business because the whole premise here is that we want digital, we want things to move faster. Security also needs to be agile. So you know, look for a solution that, that is able to scale and provide performance for your enterprise. If you've got multiple offices around the world or in the region, um, look for a solution that can scale with your business. Chances are you're gonna be adding more people today in the next coming months and, and quarters than you have today. More applications, more users, more locations. So planning for that scale is so important. For us, for example, our SaaS solution is built on a public cloud like AWS. So it can scale where, because that cloud service is ubiquitous. AWS is, is everywhere pretty much. And we can spin up new um, workloads automatically, new, new capacity automatically to scale with that business quickly. And there's also the idea of uptime. Um, we will make sure that your security is always on. Uh, if there's a gap even, uh, it can be a problem. So uptime is something to consider when you're evaluating different solutions. Um, and the architecture is, is, is key because uh, the more you get into the details, you realize the architecture really needs to support a cloud first, but also a remote working environment. And so with SASE, the whole premise is to, to move your security closer to the user. It takes the term edge computing, where we, we move the security closer to the user because that makes the, it more agile and it makes performance better when it's done closer to the user. Those are the key things 
we recommend you look at. We also recommend that when you're looking at those three pillars, if it's a CASB solution, um, it should cover all types of applications and devices. It should be a multi-mode CASB. It should allow you to cover managed devices that you give to your employees. It should also be able to cover um, unmanaged devices, the BYOD devices you bring to the organization. And, and that should be done in a way that is completely transparent to the user that has like an agentless architecture. So people don't want to install agents on their own devices. We want to have an architecture that's built for BYOD. So multi-mode CASB is key. Uh, with secure web gateways, you know, I'll, I can say is that you know you want a, a product that can scale with with the, the needs of the organization. And the more the closer the gateway is to the user, not in an appliance in the cloud somewhere that has to be forwarding traffic to the inspection, the closer to the user is important as an architecture standpoint. And then ZTNA, that, that zero trust network access, make sure that that's included and integrated in the SASE solution as well. Yeah, right. And um, so could you tell me how cloud delivered secure web gateways relate to SASE solutions and what type of secure web gateway would mm -hmm. best fit in a SASE solution? Th this is a really interesting topic because, you know, Secure web gateways have been around for a long time. Um, you know, they've been in the market for 15 years, I, I wanna say. Um, and almost every organization has them because web traffic became ubiquitous in the 2000s and we, we need to secure that web traffic. We need to inspect that web traffic. We need to make sure that if it's encrypted, we also inspect it. Um, and a lot of organizations have deployed these appliances at their data center and probably at their branch as well. And those in the, back in the day when they were created, that was a great solution for, for securing my web traffic. It, the firewall couldn't do it, so we added a gateway and it would proxy traffic uh, before it hit the, the network and it would inspect it and it would offload uh, the data, the network from, from those, those functions. Um, and then we moved into you know, a first generation of secure web gateway that was beyond that. We call it cloud delivered secure web gateways. And those are in the market now. And those, those solutions are interesting. They, they move the data of the appliance to the cloud, but they still have the appliance issue, even though it's not in your data center, the, the appliance is still in, in the cloud. So when you talk about you know, the appliances that, that you have um, at your data center, if you've still got an, a hardware appliance, um, you've got a problem with backhauling all that traffic to the data center. Uh, remote users have to use a VPN. You have to have high availability. So you've got multiple appliances. Uh, appliances themselves can be a bottleneck for scale. Uh, when you surge your web traffic, you have to plan for that. Uh, and so throughput can be an issue and making the, making the, an operational management issue sometimes to manage those, those boxes that have to be you know, updated. The software patches have to be updated. Appliances have to be refreshed. Uh, there is a certain amount of challenges with that architecture. Now, when we move to a cloud delivered architecture for secure web gateways, you still have the problem of, of latency because you're forwarding traffic to a, a cloud appliance and, and having to do the inspection in that cloud. So it adds extra hops, introduce latency. You've also got some certificate management work that has to be done and some complexity around tunneling uh, to, 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 from the, the data to that uh, cloud service. And then there's some, some privacy concerns. You're still sending the data to a cloud service and hopefully it's in your country, but it may be somewhere else you have to cope with. And so the new SASE architecture uh, that is, builds on this is really to put the gateway on the device. And this is really interesting because devices now and computers you know, have so much processing power now that you know, it makes a lot more sense and we can do it a lot easier to put the gateway, uh, you know, an agent on the, on the device and do the decryption and inspection locally on each and every device and doesn't take up a lot of uh, CPU and it uh, doesn't take away from the performance of the device, but it, it's able to be done there. And that changes the game and how we actually do uh, web security. If we can do it on the device, then we can minimize the, the latency that goes back to so the, of, the, of your web traffic as you go back to a central location to, to do inspection. So performance um, should increase. Uh, it's much simpler and it provides much more consistent security when you have that agent across all of your, all of your devices and a very you know, certain baseline, like I talked about earlier, to have consistent security across every device. 
no matter where the worker goes. With, with, for putting the gateway on the device, basically with the user, um, we're protecting the user no matter whether they're remote working, whether on the public Wi-Fi, whether they're in a branch office, wherever they go, they're protected. So it makes a lot more sense from a coverage and consistent security model uh, and much simpler because we actually do it on the device. Performance increases, we reduce the cost by having to backhaul the traffic. And the last piece is um, it's better for privacy and uh, you don't have to send the traffic outside of the country or to another location to do inspection. Uh, you do it right on the device. So this is where Secure Access Service Edge can be really innovative. It really is taking the term edge computing to a, to a new level for security. And we believe, and I think Gartner is the one that coined it, believes that this is going to be the dominant security model for enterprises and organizations going forward. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. Well, that concludes um, today's 10-minute IT jam with BitGlass Senior Director of Marketing, Jonathan Andressen. Thank you yeah. so much for chatting with me again today, Jonathan. Thanks again. Great to be with you. Take care.